and songs number 40 wash me O lamb of god wash me from sin by thine atoning blood oh make me clean purge me from every stain let me thine image gain in love and mercy reign over all within wash me O lamb of god wash me from sin i long to be like thee all pure within now let the crimson tide shed from thy wounded side be to my heart applied and make me clean wash me O lamb of god wash me from sin i will not cannot rest till pure within all human skill is vain but thou canst cleanse each stain till not a spot remain made wholly clean wash me O lamb of god wash me from sin by faith thy cleansing blood now makes me clean so near art thou to me so sweet my rest in thee O oh, blessed purity saved saved from sin wash me O lamb of god wash me from sin thou while i trust in thee will keep me clean each day to that to thee i bring heart life yea everything saved while to thee i cling saved from all sin
to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Chapter 2 now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted, because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You have seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace, that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, 
we pray. Be a divine talk Amen. you can never forget in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be singing here from Enugu, then over to our brethren in Abuja and then to Lagos and then back to Enugu.
day day has come. Ah, I say the day day has come. You may have your seat, please.
so weak and so frail. So often she reached out, but her efforts failed. With faith so persistent, determined, she must touch Jesus. Her friend said, just give up, for after 12 years of heartaches and failures, disappointments and fears, Accept your condition with a multitude. He will not see us. I can hear rejoicing as she moves down the lane. She sees someone coming. They are calling his name. Son of David, Messiah. She heard someone call him the healer. The crippled and lame are now leaping for joy. And those who are blind are beholding the Lord. Could this be the moment of the injustice? Many concealers. Her heart beat so fast as she came into sight. Her emotions were filled with joy and with pride. She let him pass by, but not out of reach. As he touched his garment, he turned to speak. Someone's been healed today. A miracle passed your way. Who touched my clothes? You can be made whole. Step forward and play. Your faith has pulled you through. Your healing has come. Close to your miracle, Jesus is passing your way. You can be healed today. Let a miracle pass your way. Reach out to Jesus close. You can be made home. Step forward and Yeah. 
preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. India beckoned. I from injustice to indomitable by Christ, and from narrow minded to nurturing milk from Christ, D from dissolution to a decisive decision for Christ, I from idleness to independence through Christ. A. From abject poverty to affluent possessions in Christ. As GCK this November offers you full redemption through Christ. From India to the world, bringing salvation, solution, and liberty through Christ for all. Every yoke it will break. All the shackles it will shatter in Jesus' name. November 23, 228. 2023, 1600 hours GMT daily. Full redemption through Christ for everyone, everywhere. Ministers, church workers, and professionals will gain speed as they will receive the great fundamentals of ministry in three special days, November 24, 27, and 28. And on Saturday, young people all over the world will be elevated at Impact Academy. It will be the divine creation of heroes from zero. You follow, you go. As I grow, you follow, you grow. As I glow, you follow, you glow in Jesus' name. A life-changing experience awaits you at full redemption through Christ. Live at GCK locations across the globe. And live, their satellite and all our social media platforms. The man of God. Anointed international evangelist and convener of the GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kui will minister Christ with power. Along with other ministers from India. This is GCK. It is the gospel to every creature. I've been working great miracles in the life of people present physically in the program and uh, those who are connecting through satellite, through internet through Zoom and social media, the Lord has been glorifying his name. And we want to listen to uh, some of these testimonies. Like I told you, at the end of this program, don't be in a hurry to go. Stay back, and we shall rejoice together. The first testifier. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, my name is Sir Rachel Ahmed. From Abuja region, Itako Group, Palace District. I want to thank the name of the Lord for what God has done for me yesterday. Since 2013, I have a very painful, I have a pain in my stomach. And uh, that pain is as a result of I felt sick. I went to the hospital, they checked, they said there's nothing there, but there's, the pain is still there. After the scan, they did everything, no solution, but the brethren prayed. Praise the Lord. So I was delivered, I was healed, but the pain is still there. I see there is a sore, an injury at the right side of my stomach. When the pain starts, I can't lift up my right leg. In fact, it will be paining me as if I delay once to paralyze. So I've been managing it, praying to God that God, one day you do it. And uh, yesterday, at work, the pain comes up. When the pain comes up, I can't send to, ca to carry anything from the ground. I can't bend to pick something easily. But I told God, I said, God, this time, this pain come at the wrong time. And the uh, as I said, we step my foot to this place, I will not go back with the pain. I came here yesterday, I was praying to God with the pain, praying, telling God that God, remember me. And I was our father, and the Lord climbed the pulpit, he said, he's talking to you in particular. I claim it. I say, God, remember me. And I see he was preaching, he prayed. After it, the last amen, praise the Lord. So she lay her hands to the place where I had the problem. I laid my hand there. 
In fact, after the last amen, that's how the pain vanished. Praise the, vanished. the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! And, uh, it's gone and it's gone forever. I went on to confine me. Amen. 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 We thank God for what the Lord has done for our sister. The pain is gone and it's never coming back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister, tell us your name briefly and uh, be very brief. Praise the Lord. Praise the Master Jesus. My name is Ngozi Mwezi. I, I am from Abuja region in Jai Group, Deeper Life High School, Kado Ground. I want to testify what God has done in my life. Since 2007, I work for King's Care Hospital. They did straight my leg, very painful, swollen up. And they did the test, they say it's arthritis. I say, what caused the arthritis for me now? They say that is uh, maybe old age. I say, okay. So I'll be praying. Say, God, help me remember me. You are the one created me. As well, I pray like that, I go to, it's unbearable. I, if I have enemy, I will not allow enemy to suffer what I suffer for this pain. It's very painful. It's itching me inside, walking up on my body. That if it's not unbearable for me, I cry for another sister, I cry for another brother. They direct me, I go to Matama. All these things, we, 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 I try my own. As Please tell woman, us what the but, Lord has done, sister. But uh, through the ministration of the man of God had, as he praying, say, uh, everything consigned us that uh, for our body, eye, uh, leg, everything, as uh, we pray like that. And God Almighty uses the power to uh, touch me and every pain in my body, every problem come and vanish. Every Praise pain, the Lord. Every problem has vanished. Praise the Lord. And it's gone never to come back in Jesus' name. Amen. We move to the media section. Two minutes. Please give us some of the testimonies. We have some testimonies from the social media. From Yaya region, Sister Ladi Ogoi used to have pains on her right hand, right leg. And that happened for a long time. She said, after the GS prayer last night, the pains suddenly disappeared. And now she can stretch her hand and her leg, and there is no pain at all. Praise the Lord. Testimony from Tasha Group, Guagua region. Brother Samuel Danladi was healed of kidney infection. According to the writing, the problem started since November 2016. And he has visited several hospitals to find solution to the problem but all efforts proved abortive after the prayer of the man of god on the first day of the crusade he touched himself he searched himself he went back to check and found out that the kidney infection had totally disappeared according to his writing he is perfectly healed and all the symptoms have gone away. Also from the social media, Amaka Chika Ede came back home with heavy pain all over her body. But when he heard that our father in the faith was coming, she decided to trust God right on the social media. During the prayers, she believed God. And she said, after the prayers, she checked and the pain is gone. She says she's perfectly okay now, and God has healed her. Njoku David says, Almighty God healed me. I had a back pain that lasted for almost one year after the prayer of the man of God. I am now totally healed. Praise the Lord. Striking testimony from Taraba State. Mama Usman Audu from Bailey region in Taraba State was a blind woman. She was invited to the crusade on Friday night, that's yesterday, after the prayers of the man of God, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. She believed God and she trusted God and started to wait for her eyes to be opened. Suddenly, according to her writing, her eyes instantaneously got opened. 
brethren sister mama usman audu can now see clearly praise the lord finally from ebuka fabian he says i had waist pain excruciating waist pain after the prayer of the man of god the waist pain totally disappeared praise the lord hallelujah put your hands together for jesus give jesus a clap of praise. thank you praise the lord the young people have lost their voice praise the lord looks like there's a great impact here this morning shout impact wonderfully made for excellence you know when some people say that they think look at the world look at the stars look at the sun look at the rivers everything made for excellence and look at the birds look at the mammals look at the sea look at the ocean look at the balance chemical balance in everything everywhere made for excellence look at the galaxies look at the all the planets and look at the orbits and how everything moves around and look at all the circles wonderfully made for excellence take this blade of grass and put it under a microscope and see all the pattern see the symmetry see all the signs see how you compare this with that wonderfully made for excellence take two blades of grass and compare this with that look at the perfect pattern here look at the perfect pattern there compare them they're different they look the same to everyone and everyone is wonderfully made for excellence look at that arch and look at them and they all gather together and they build something how did they get the design how did they study architecture how did they bring everything together as if they were building the pyramid of long ago egypt wonderfully made for excellence and now look at you i said look at you i look at your head i look at all the cells there the neutrons the connections and i see how all the cells in the brain actually there are billions of them and they're connected together connected with the eyes the ears connected with the feeling connected with the senses connected with everything and nothing misses out and i can i can differentiate the smell of an onion from that of the oil i can differentiate i don't know how or why i can tell the difference of the smell of the orange and uh, of the banana they're all different and i'm seeing uh, look at me when i want to stand i stand when i want to run i run and when i want to bend down pick anything i bend down and pick that thing and when i want to smile and all the muscles on my face i can't see them but they're there and when somebody wants to cry and all the muscles they get into the mood of crying and when he wants to cheer up and he said i'm happy something turns the motion and the actions of all those uh, my nerves and the muscles and I say I'm wonderfully made and look at all the blood that is running and the miles they traverse and they go through all my body 
and I look at all the, the air I breathe. I breathe in the air and the oxygen that is needed is separated and goes from my brain and goes everywhere and the carbon dioxide I don't need that one comes out and I breathe in again and day by day my skin's my skin is changing and day by day I put off the old refuse and then when I eat that food all the junk that is not needed that one passes out smoothly and the other one that remains that made me taller and bigger and more intelligent everything is retained and I say I am fearfully and wonderfully me. I look and as I see, I see things around me. I see things beyond me. And as I look up, I not only see the physical, I begin to imagine where I will be in 10 years time. And then I look at the star and I say, I'm going beyond the sky somebody there you're going beyond the sky i came to tell you that in any way you consider it you consider it physically you consider it psychologically you consider it physiologically you consider it naturally you consider it supernaturally you are wonderfully and fearfully made and i want you to realize today the doctors have been studying the human body, the anatomy. And they've been studying every part of man for ages now. They've been studying. They have not come to the end of understanding all the parts of the body. Because as thousands and millions of those researchers are researching on their single body they have not finished their study they started before we were born and they are still here and they study night and day because you are so deep you are so great and you are incomparable to any other creature on earth you are fearfully and wonderfully made and i came today to explore with you this creation this person we call an offspring of adam a follower of christ when we look at the physical we look at the natural we look at the spiritual we put everything together there's a power that could come into your life today and lift you up fearfully wonderfully made <laughs> you know sometimes but if you take um, you know a wristwatch lift it up lift it up lift it up it comes to a point so high you look you cannot see you go beyond any kind of human description and that's what you are going to be that's what you are already i just came to reveal to you what you know already and then will take you from there from known to the unknown you will get to such a point that enemies on earth will not recognize you and the people that are trying to do something stay here stay here stay with us you say no i am going higher who is that who is that who is that raise up that hand today you make a covenant with the lord that the god of heaven who has made you so wonderful who has created you and he has put everything to be an achiever and even go beyond an achiever it's brought everything to your life you're making a deal a league a covenant an agreement with that god today and the wonder of your life and the treasure in your life that has been hidden will come out today the world will see there is a man inside that young person there is a woman inside that young person what others have done you will do and go beyond whatever others have tried to do and they have not been able to do your day has come it will happen to who i said to who just close your eyes something goes beyond your sight 
and you will become that good, that great, that glorious thing that be your, that's beyond sight in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you have come to reveal to us what was hidden, what we didn't know about our individual selves that you have so made us you have so created us and you have so impacted our lives that now we will discover what we are made for what stuff we have inside us where we're going and lord i pray all that your children need to get to where you have created them for everyone will get there in jesus name and we will naturally normally know that you have put a wonder in every life and that wonder will come out in jesus name Lord, turn and change everyone to be of a higher species in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shout, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're looking at the subject today. Wonderfully made for excellence there's no doubt as you look at genesis chapter 1 reading from verse 26 genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image let us make man in our image even if you don't know that our image you know that god is talking from heaven and you know that God is making the proposal and is making the plan. It's going to make man, woman in his image. And he says, in our likeness, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Now you know that, you know, it's like the world is turning around and the world is now having dominion on man. You hear that earthquake? You hear that tornado, and you hear that accident, and you hear things happening in the world. It's like the world is now having dominion over man. But man was created that will have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every, every, every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. And then in verse 27, it says, so God created man, like he said he would, how he said he would, to the level and the height that he said he would, and to the value heavenly value that he said he would. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. Created the man in his image, created the woman in his image, created the boy in his image, created the girl in his image, created everyone, male and female, created he them. And then in Psalm 139, I'm reading from verse 14, Psalm 139, verse 14, what God said he will do and what God actually did and then the result that came from the hand of God the psalmist now records for us in Psalm 139 verse 14 it says I will praise thee for I ah, look at that not only Adam not only Eve not only Noah not only Enoch not them us too. He said after thousands of years that the world had existed. Now they becomes and he says for I, I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous at thy words that and that my soul knoweth right well. That my soul knoweth right well. When you know that you know beyond any shadow of doubt that you sitting there standing there that you are fearfully and wonderfully made then you understand no impossibility in your life anymore 
no hindrance in your life anymore okay i understand when your teacher is teaching lecturer is lecturing mathematics you don't talk you keep quiet you only write write and write but you know the preacher is different he's not teaching chemistry he's not teaching physics it's not not now not now at least he's not teaching master he's teaching about you and talking about you and when i say things that will lift you up to the sky you shout amen now he knows he knows that even though it's not adam it's not eva it's not any of these people he's living now more than two thousand years after creation and then he says i two thousand years beyond the time of adam and eve i am wonderfully and i'm fearfully made marvelous at thy works and that my soul knoweth right well what you know today will lift you up what you know today will change your direction in life what you know today will put you on top in jesus name yes i understand some of us are already on top and i you know rejoice and identify with that uh, young daughter who came on top in delta and came on top in the zone and came on top in nigeria and came on top in africa now stay there you are going to go higher than you have been and so as we declare that we have been wonderfully made and fearfully made in job chapter 33 i'm looking at verse 4 in job chapter 33 the spirit of god has made me what i want you to notice here is this person talking at the time of job far away from the time of genesis there are people that believe that god was personally involved in creating adam and eve but he led the rest to the hands of the men and the women and whatever comes out now is their decision parental decision what comes out now is the family decision and they say yes he created adam and eve and they were wonderfully made but here we are in job and many years have passed on and now he says the spirit of god has made me and the breath of the almighty has given me life and so you know this is not just for adam and this is not just for eve this is for you this is for me. this is for me. that wonder will come out for the world to see the three things i'm looking at in this what should i call it should i call it a message should i call it enlightenment and should i call it education should i call it edification whatever we call it three things coming out and the three things coming out write the word form form f-o-r-m then an e-d to show that it's been done formed write the next word formed but put a de behind that formed number one formed number two deformed number three still write the word formed but put a trance behind it a trance is when you cross over like transport you cross over from one place to the other like translation you cross over from one language to the other like a transcendental you come over from what place and from one level to another now we're going to write the word form and then we put a trans before it transformed three things we're looking at formed deformed transformed number one formed by the inspiration of the creator formed 
by the inspiration of the creator now we'll come to number two after god had made the creation and formed we now come to number two deformed by inventions of corruption inventions of corruption we came formed by the lord wonderfully and fearfully and now the next stage the world around us they begin to tamper with the creation of god deformed by inventions of corruption number three god says he will not allow the world to take you over from him what he intended originally when he formed you he said he will not allow anyone to deform his word and so he says come now the way you are i know what you are doing i know where you are come now and be transformed by the intervention of christ somebody say amen, amen. and so formed by the inspiration of the creator number two deformed by the inventions of corruption and number three transformed by the intervention of christ we're coming to number one there number one there is formed 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 by the inspiration of God. If we had remained like that, if no fallen angel had affected us, if no evil spirit had affected us, if no human being, depraved human being, had left us alone so that they mind their business and we live our lives, we would remain like we have been created by God formed by the inspiration of god look at genesis chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 7 we're searching for the word formed by the inspiration of god in um, genesis chapter 2 verse 7 it says and the lord god formed the man of the dust of the earth of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul it says god formed the man have you looked at the formation of god at your fingers we have five we don't need more than five anything we want to do these fingers will they hold something pick something throw something whatever five you know have you looked at your arms? Two of them. We don't need three. And the Lord has formed us perfectly as in all we need. Have you looked at your feet? Only two. And these two, they are now. And they run anywhere. Once we train those legs, they can do anything. Have you looked at your eyes? Only two. And they are now. Have you looked at your nostrils? Only two. Have you looked at your ears? The Lord formed man. He knew all the connections there ought to be in the body. And then he put the spirit there. He breathed unto the man. And he became a living soul. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man. And there he put the man. And since that time, when God creates anyone and makes anyone, and you are born, he puts you where you ought to be. And where you ought to be, you will do good there. Amen. You don't need to run here, run there, run here, just get Where the Lord has put you, you will excel there. Your excellence will meet you there. Your provision will meet you there. Everything you need, everything will be there in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not saying that somebody cannot travel from here to there, from there to there, but I've seen, I have seen personally, the people who left where God put them. And then they start from scratch again and then they are trying they are trying when they look back the rest of us who are staying where god put us they shake their heads they say if i had known you will not regret yeah. 
he made us and as he has made us he has put us where we are Isaiah chapter 43 and I'm reading from verse 7 Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7 he says even everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory look at this I have formed him I'm just trying to emphasize to you that it is not only Adam or not only Eve that was formed by God he said I have formed him everyone that is called by my name he says yea yes I have made him the Lord uses those two words made transform a synonyms meaning the same thing i made him i formed him i created him the same thing look at verse 21 now in verse 21 these people look at the word here now have i formed for myself this people have i formed for myself you know satan is a thief and jesus said the thief cometh to steal, to kill, to destroy what God has formed for himself. Satan wants to hijack, he wants to steal, he wants to take you for himself. God forbid. God forbid. He will not have you. He will not have me. He will not take you formed for God, for himself, and then keep you for himself. And then he says something. He says, they shall show forth my praise. He says, I formed them. I created them. That in every act they have, in every life they live, in every profession they find themselves, in every college or educational institution they find themselves, they, all the people I have formed, will show forth my praise. I will see the praise of God in your academics. I'll see the glory of God in your profession as we're growing up and going on and we look at no matter who is looking at you you'll see the praise of God in your life in Jesus name now we're looking at um, Isaiah chapter one, chapter 49 and we're reading from verse 5 Isaiah chapter 49 verse 5 it says and now says the Lord Lord that formed me. He understands. You see, everybody, when God enlightens you, then you understand. I'm not just here. He formed me. And then he said, that formed me from the womb. And then he says, as a, a, a servant, to bring Jacob again to him. And then it says, Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall be, they shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my God shall be my strength. Everyone think about Adam. When he created Adam and formed him from the dust, he breathed unto him the breath of life. And then Adam and Eve, they became living souls. Now, the same, he forms us. And as he has formed us, he has created us, he has made us, and he brings strength into us. And I speak to you now, you're weak, you're feeble, you're sick, you're tired. You're weary. It's like I can't move on anymore. I send the strength of the Spirit of God into your life in Jesus' name. Then look at look at Jeremiah chapter one, and I'm reading from verse five. It says to him, it says, "Before I formed thee." It's not talking about Adam. It's talking about Jeremiah. That tells you then every one of us we can say he formed me can you say that he can you say that again say that with conviction 
you know, I heard of, you know, some young people, actually teenagers, they just entered this class. And this teacher was new to them, and they were new to the teachers. And uh, so he said, now you children, he called them children, students, um, introduce yourself, tell me your name, where you are from, and what you think you are going to get out of this institution. And then one day of them stood up and said, I am Jackie or whatever. And uh, I came from here, from there, and they, our families, they don't generally understand understand or study science but here I am I don't know what will happen okay thank you and then another one stood up and said I am Massa and uh, we came from rural areas and this is my first year in a city and I'm trying to adjust I'm trying to see what will happen and then another one stood up and he said I am John and the way he said it, the teacher squared up because the way he spoke, the teacher knew that something was coming. He said, I am John. I'm no dummy. I'm not stupid. I'm bright. I'm great. Everything you teach, I'm going to catch. And I'm going to make distinction out of this place. Why? Because God made me. And he doesn't make dummies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God made you and he doesn't make zero he doesn't make dummy am I having an amen yeah. and the Lord will show you he revealed to you and because he made you because he formed you something great unexpected will come out of you yeah. he says from, your bed, from the mother's belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth from the womb, I sanctified and set thee apart, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What Jeremiah did not know, God knew and God told him. And what you do not know about yourself, that he has formed you, and he created you by the inspiration of the creator. What you didn't know, the Lord will tell you today. And as he tells you today, then you understand that you are going to be what God has created you to be. Made for excellence. Made for excellence. How about that? Excellence. He is eternity. God told Jeremiah, before you were born, in eternity, when you didn't know you were coming to the earth, I pictured you. I had your portrait. And I made you from eternity. Understand, the Lord had had thinking, thought, plan, proposal for you before you were born. Made from eternity. And then, the next word there, the next letter there, ex excellence. Excellence. That's what you are made for. If you're deviating here and there, going yonder and going to the other side, you'll come back and the Lord will bring you back to excellence. And then see there is for contribution. Contribution. What does that mean? Every creature on earth contribute something to the progress of the earth. Look at the ants, they're contributing something. Look at the fish, they're contributing something. Look at the sun, it's contributing something. Look at the moon, it's contributing something. Even things you don't know that the moon is contributing. All the creatures of God are contributing and now you were created by God you will contribute to the progress of this earth before you go your life will not be somebody that just walked on the sand and then we can't see your mark or a bird flying in the sky and we cannot see the past that the bird has flown through you are going to be a contributor you might contribute to the joy of other people to strengthen other people you might contribute like a doctor who is treating other people like an engineer who is building roads and building bridges like a nurse who is attending to those who are sick and like a caretaker a carers who are taking care of old people whatever it is the lord has called you to do you 
will contribute in Jesus name and so you are asking yourself as God has made me for excellence am I do I still have the consciousness from eternity before I was born I was created from eternity do I have you understand I am created for excellence I am created for contribution I am created for engagement 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 you have to engage in something don't say this is small the ant doesn't say this is small it carries that little bit and goes and goes the direction the Lord has mapped out you go to and that one comes and that one comes and we all we all engage and then we build the world like he wants to build the church like he wants to build a community like he wants because we're created for engagement now the um, next letter there what's the next letter there L were created for his likeness his likeness his image that will be like him that will talk like him that will walk like him that will think like him his likeness that God will like what comes out of our lives. And they, I'm doing this. And what have I done today? Okay, I've gone here. I've gone there. What have I uh, done? So I put some imprint of my life today. Yes, I put some imprint there. And what God looks at everything you're putting your hand on, you're putting your life into, the Lord will like you will like what you do uh, there will be no demarcation or frown between you and the Lord and then uh, you show his nature and you show his likeness and the next L there is love, somebody shout love, love. say it as if you meant it, mean it. Love. love, you will love see how God loves frowning, no, smiling happy and making everybody that looks at him happy. You'll not go through life as if you are carrying a heavy load on your back. Can you love the people as you love God? I know that time I'm carrying a great load. I'm carrying a big load. I don't know what I'm God is going to become of me. Cheer up, cheer up. The love of God will hold you up. And as you love, love is like, you know, like a mirror. You, you, you stand at the mirror, and if you frown, the image at the mirror will frown. If you act furious, the image in the mirror will act furious. If you act tense, as if, you know, you can, all your nerves and everything, they are on edge. The one in the mirror will also behave like that because it's your image there. But when you ease up and you love and you relax and you are cheerful, the one in the mirror will also have the same action. What I'm saying is, if you go through life frowning, all the people that see you, they will meet you with frowning. If you go through life, angry, anxious, furious everyone in the world that's how they will act to you and you cannot enter any door you cannot go anywhere because you are an angry man angry woman turn it around love when you show love love will come back to you in multiplied fold in Jesus name we are created and made for love not for frowning, not for anger, not for fighting, not for hurting other people. And the next word there is edification. To edify is to charge other people, to motivate other people, to inspire other people by your action, by your studies, by your achievement, by everything you have, you are edifying the rest of the people there were made and were formed for edification and then were made for needfulness needfulness, you know sometimes you are, if you are absent from class, everybody is wondering where is he, where is she why, because they need you and the teacher, for him to teach very well, it is asking where is this boy where is this girl why because the teacher even needs you and everybody when you act in life and you're not acting like a scrap of paper every anybody can dump that that one is not just that one is not needful when he was there what was he doing 
And when she was there, what was she contributing? But when you live a life that shows that you are formed to represent God here and you are needed and you know you are needed even when you don't want to go out to say i have to because i'm needed there i don't want to go to class but i will go because i'm needed there i don't want to go to the market but i will go because the people who will not buy from any other person they're good looking for me i must be there i don't want to go and teach in the class today but i will go because i am needed needful we're made for needfulness and then we're made for cooperation cooperation the way the lord has made us one hand alone exteriors skillful cannot do it all you cannot tell the other hand go to pieces i don't need you we're made for cooperation we cannot walk straight and walk long without the two legs cooperating together were made for cooperation we cannot you know live a peaceful life without cooperating in our language what we say what the other person were made for cooperation and so we're not made for competition we're not made for criticizing we're not made for cutting down other people were made for cooperation and then we're made for endless existence you will live forever in heaven because that's why god created us he wanted to have men and women boys and girls that when they finish here they will just change accommodation and they will leave their accommodation on earth and go to their accommodation in heaven because we everyone because we you because we everyone that comes to christ because we are made for endless existence on the other hand those who do not have the nature of Christ in them, and they do not have the salvation of God with them, and they do not have the life, the life and the likeness of God with them. When they live here, they're still going to go to a great beyond because everyone is made for endless existence. The only problem is, the only pain is, the only challenge is they will live in hell fire far away from the lord not in the presence of the lord and that existence of the sinner of the one who goes the wrong direction and did not repent and turn to the lord and become born again he will still be in endless existence in hell fire forever but those of us who know that we are formed we're made and we are created for excellence endless existence with the lord forever and ever in jesus name amen. let me hear the amen. amen let heaven hear the amen. amen now that's number one number two now as we came into this world we were formed by god and now the world sees us a new person has come a new inhabitant has come a new friend has come and every bad thing they have learned before you came before you were born they want to teach you that you say i'm going to school already they said this one that one is formal school this one is an informal school and so they begin to teach you all those things and those things they teach you you are deformed by inventions of corruption you're deformed your life deformed your brain deformed your thoughts deformed your actions deformed your character deformed where did you learn that many of the things people do they don't even use the maths 
were taught in class. They don't use the physics, we're taught. They don't use the history, the geography, we're taught. They don't use the civic knowledge, they are taught. They only use the knowledge they have that deforms them here on earth. Number two, deformed by inventions of corruption. I want you to look at Ecclesia. Ecclesiastics chapter 7 and I'm reading from verse 29 take note of this it says lo this only have I found that God has made man upright that goes back to point number one he formed us for excellence but he says now but they have brought, have sought out many, tell me, inventions. Many inventions. The inventions that were not there when God made, formed, created us. They've sought out many inventions. When it says invention, what are those things? I'm going to spell it for you. I is idleness. Idleness. And the devil finds work for an idle hand, an idle mind. Have you know when, when you're working and you have a sum, you have a problem, you're trying to solve a mass, you don't have all those uh, extraneous and evil thoughts. They can't come in because you're occupied. You're, you're busy tra uh, saying this. What's the axiom? What's the theorem? And what do I get from that? How do I make use of that? Am I going to use Pythagoras theorem? Am I going to use this or that? Why you're doing all that? Because you are not idle, all those evil things will not come in. And what brings those inventions that deform us? One, idleness. And then, then there is negligence. When we neglect that, you know, we have to read that book. We have to go to that office. We have to deal with that file. We have to attend to that person. And we we'll just neglect everything. And sooner or later, you'll forget. You'll forget that this is part of the reason you are here on earth. Inventions. They sought out many inventions. And the V there, vanities. We go to vanity. Vanity here in a language. Vanity in a dressing vanity in our interaction especially boys and girls men and women vanities and vanity of vanities all is vanity and those vanities they corrupt us and they make our lives vain and then the next word there is envy because we are not working, others are working. They are getting promotion, we are still staying in that same old dumb place. And because we are negligent, all the other people that are active and they are moving on, they are achieving this and they are achieving that, and then we are behind. And the only thing we can do is envy, envy, envy them. And then we are think, thinking how to bring them down, to clamp them down. Envy. Those are the things that those worldly inventions bring but the Lord will set you free and then uh, there is in their numbness numbness uh, numbness you understand uh, what you can't even feel any feeling uh, in your hand that, that's what happens to the people that have leprosy they have leprosy and so all the feelings in their hand all the feelings in their toes everything wears off and so they can uh, try to open something by force and they will not feel the pain in their hand and they do a lot of things that numbness has come in and there's no feeling, there's no conscience there's no pain and their lives go from bad to worse and I pray the Lord will deliver you and set you free in Jesus name and then of course team there is for transgression, transgression when God created Adam and Eve they didn't know about you know inventing something that is bad, something that will kill another fellow, something 
something that will spoil another person's life. All they could think about was what God was thinking about the love and the help and the compre compre uh, comprehension and everything that we ought to do. But now, transgression has come in. And in that transgression, they do something. Is there nobody to correct them? Is there nobody to put them right? Is there nobody to say, come on here, I'm older than you are. I've been here before you came to this world. If we go in this direction, it's the path of perdition. It's the path of punishment. And it's a path of never do well. And then they say, no, I, there is incorrigibility. Incorrigibility means coming from the word incorrigible. And it means cannot be corrected. And it's just a kind of adamant and evil. What I did, I am doing what I'm doing. I keep on doing incorrigibility. That's what deforms our lives. And I pray that your life will come the right side up right side up and all those things inventions that are destroying our lives idleness negligence vanities envy numbness transgression and incorrigibility i pray the lord will wipe them out he formed us at the beginning he will reform us again it will transform us again. It will turn our lives the right direction again in Jesus' name. Are, are you writing down what I'm, what I'm telling you? And do you know that these are the things that people invent inventions of corruption that spoil our lives? Yes or no? Yes. And now the next word is oh, it is occultism 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 it's like uh, uh, they're saying uh, now nah, you're a young boy a young lady a young man you understand that you have followed the god of your fathers you have followed the god of the bible and then you obey 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 the word of god now be a guy and be smart and be a guy and be courageous and be fearless and there's something that will make you fearless there's something that whatever you do anybody everybody they'll be afraid of you and nobody will touch you or correct you anymore and you say what's that what's that they say well it will be a big word to you they say it's occultism there's a hidden power somewhere and if you join you but you'll go through initiation you'll go through kind of modification you'll go through some rituals and then you'll have some it may be painful a little bit but you know you are heading for something great that you will be a fearless creature here on earth and you thought it was a good thing and then you go in there you're in occultism already already gang already and already your life is now hooked with satan you see them in the dream you see them in the day they will send messages by occultic power an occultic information sender other people will not know you will see them when other people are not seeing them now you are hooked in that's occultism but the lord will break the yoke from your life today He'll set you free. And all these, all these inventions that have brought corruption and is bringing you down today, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And look at the next word there. In the night club. In the night club. They say, leave your brain behind. Come in here. Leave your intelligence behind. Come here, leave your thinking of consequence that this will spoil my life. If you are thinking like that, you're not coming to this nightclub. But leave all that behind. Deem the light so that, you know, the people there will feel at ease. Nobody is seeing them. And they can do what they have never done before. They get into those nightclubs. And when you get in there, that is part of what will bring inventions of corruption in your life. Yes. 
there are many things you know that forms that we can call that is much the summary of it all sin sin and you are immersed in it sin it surrounds you sin it enters your brain sin it seizes your thinking and understanding sin it rolls in your blood sin if you become addicted to it sin and when those inventions of corruption are come into your life the man is finished and i pray you will not be finished yeah. we're starting from today and we're going to climb a new ladder we're starting from today and we're going to go a new direction we're starting today and that one of the past deformed by the inventions of corruption is going to die today and then you come alive i'm talking to somebody there I'm talking to somebody there. You come alive in Jesus' name. Come back before I leave that point. You come back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Lo, this only have I found that God has made the man, the woman, the boy, the girl upright. But they have sought out many inventions and i pray that those inventions that destroy us that spoil our lives everything will vanish away today i see a new man there i see a new woman there i see somebody who will be looking down i see you looking up and i see you seeing the, the vision of the future and then you say i've never i've not been using this word for a long time now great i'm going to be great glorious i'm going to be glorious and gracious the grace of god is going to fill your life in jesus name give me an amen that will lift you up we're coming to point number three now point number three we're looking at you remember the word the stem the stem word is formed and now we join trans to that stem word and now you have transformed by the intervention of christ the lord will intervene in your life today you will not remain the same everything you have struggled with i want to drop that i want to drop that you couldn't the lord himself will walk out his glory in your life in jesus name and the original plan of god will come back that you are made and formed for excellence that excellence will come in jesus name i want to come to number three now transformed by the intervention of christ we're looking at romans chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 1 it says i beseech you i beg of you i plead with you and it says therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice you know if uh, the doctor is going to work on you and is going to operate and take away the thing that is uh, eating you up destroying your life you have to present yourself to him you have to go to him you have to go to her and then you have to release yourself so that the doctor the nurse or whoever they are can do the work and i pray that you surrender to christ like that today in jesus name and and it says to present our bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world why they destroyed us they derailed us why because they deformed us the things that injured us that injured us that took away a brain that took away a mind that made us foolish senseless silly i'm going to surrender to that again enough is enough i said enough is enough it says now that we are we be transformed that's the word right there transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God will come into your life. What's the perfect will of God that you are healed and you stay healthy? What's the perfect will of God that you are saved, you are righteous? What's the perfect will of God that you are the favorite of heaven? What's the perfect will of God that every prayer you pray, he will answer? What's the perfect will of God that your desires will be fulfilled here on earth? What's the perfect will of God that your mommy will be happy over your life? What's the perfect will of God? Even I, the preacher, your pastor, your father, and the Lord, everything that is coming and new in your life, I'll be happy for you in Jesus' name. And the goodness of God will follow you. You'll be rising higher and higher. And here I am at the clapping corner. I'm saying, I'm watching you keep on rising. I'm watching you keep on going. I'm watching you keep on growing. I say, don't stop yet. Don't stop yet. I know you have achieved this. You have achieved this. You have achieved that. And I'm saying, here am I in the motivational, inspirational corner here. Keep on riding. And you're right to the top in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord will do. He says that we're renewed in our mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How is this going to happen? It's going to happen by the intervention of Christ. By the intervention of Christ. What's intervention? I, there is imputation. Imputation means what you didn't have, the Lord will impute it to your record free of charge. You didn't have righteousness. You say, Lord, righteousness is missing in my life. And then he says, come on here. And as you come to Christ, he will impute his righteousness into you in Jesus' name. And then in that intervention, it's his name. He said, whatsoever you ask him, my name is name. It's what will bring that intervention unto you, the name of the Lord. He says, that shall bring forth a child, and that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And then, anything you ask in the name, the success you ask, the victory you ask, and the healing you ask, and the, the, the dominion you ask, he will give it to you in that name. Amen. Amen. And then she there is his teaching, his teaching. You know, he teaches us to succeed, not to fail. He teaches us to make it, not to be defeated. And his teaching will come to you. And as his teaching comes to you, you will go up in Jesus' name. He there is empowerment. Empowerment. He will give you power. Amen. Amen. Power. Somebody shout power. power. He says, behold, I give unto you power. He will not give you weakness. You know, what kind of savior will that be? If when you are before in temptation, he withdraws his power and he gives you weakness. When you are before Satan, then he withdraws his power and gives you weakness. Uh -uh. You will not be weak before Satan. You'll not be weak before sickness. You'll not be weak before any challenge in your life. In Jesus' name. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. How much of the power of the enemy are you going to tread on? How much of the power of the enemy are you going to overcome? is fulfilled in your life yeah. and then he says and nothing shall by enemies hurt you amen yeah. amen yeah. when he says that nothing shall by enemies hurt me what does he mean by that when i need to read understand nothing will hurt my brain when I need to see very clearly and I need to see the path before me 
and discern and differentiate between this and that nothing will hurt my eyes what i need to hear the instruction that will say do this do this do this this one is optional this one is optional pick one of the three optionals and do that when i need to hear instruction nothing will hurt my ears and nothing will hurt my progress nothing shall by any means hurt you amen, amen. intervention of christ imputation the name of the teaching, the empowerment, and then the redemption that, that he has given us. He redeems us from the curse of the law. Every curse broken in your life. They say, they say, they say, our family members never go beyond the age of 40. They say it's a curse on our family. That curse is removed out of you. Yeah. And they say that, you know, when you go to the doctor, they give you a form to feel. They want to know, do you still have your father alive? If you say no, okay, what killed your father? They say about your mother, what's the challenge, health challenge of your mother? Your siblings, what do you see? They have not even examined you. They see it on your form. Okay, they say, this killed daddy, and this killed mommy, and this killed brother, and this killed sister, and you are here. Now, what do you want me to tell you? Then they say, this is likely to heal you, to kill, to kill you. I reject that in Jesus' name. I reject that for you because we're redeemed by Christ and he has redeemed us from the curse of the law and every curse is broken out of your life in Jesus name be there is virtue because Christ had virtue and he said he perceived the virtue was gone out of him as we come now the virtue of Christ replenished always there that virtue will come in your life in Jesus name if there is enablement he enabled me he enables us he enables you and from now on all the enablement you need will be granted unto you in jesus name and then end is nailing it to the cross all your shame he gathered that together all your suffering all your punishment and he nailed that to the cross and that thing will never come back into your life in jesus name till there is for triumph somebody there will triumph over every challenge they'll triumph because of christ because of what he has done because he's present with you he'll make you triumph i indwell him indwell him the father said i'll come and dwell with them and christ behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone opens the door i will come in and sup and dwell with him if anyone loves me and loves my commandment i and the father will come into him and dwell with him the lord will dwell with you he will never leave you he'll never forsake you anytime you go through any challenge any tunnel understand there's light at the end of that tunnel and the lord who dwells with you will abide with you forever in jesus name oh is oppression he will not preach on you I said he'll operate on you. The operation of the Spirit, the operation of Christ, will work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. And now, now, he gives us the gift of a new nature. A new nature. Somebody shout a new nature. Somebody shout a new nature. And I'm sure as we round up now, and you stand up there, before you sit down again, something will happen be between the standing up and the sitting down. Yeah. Between the prayer and the final amen, something will happen. A new nature will come unto you. The nature that does well, 
the nature that thinks well, the nature that moves well, and the nature that goes to the right place at the right time for the right purpose to have the goodness of God in your life. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the intervention of Christ. Welcome to the power of Christ in man. Welcome to the success and what you are going to have now. Welcome to the original plan and purpose of God formed for excellence. What is he? What is she? The Lord accomplished it in our lives today in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now. Rise up now and let the Lord hear you that you understand you are formed by him by the inspiration of the creator although you are deformed by the corruption of the world now you can come and receive from him all those corruptions confess them throw them out vomit them out separate from them Repent, turn, and believe in the Lord who has come to give you new life and new nature. Open your mouth and pray. Don't just sit down there or stand up there. Say, Lord, here am I. I receive. I repent. I turn around. I believe in you. And I know those corruptions will not follow me after this prayer. Between the standing up and sitting down later, you, done, you would have done your operation in my life even now. He will do it. He will do it as a God that cannot fail. He remembers his original intention in forming you. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I come by faith. I come believing. I come trusting. And the Lord will do that work of transformation. Impute in part that righteousness, your own righteousness, so that my life now be upright, straightforward. Grant me a power in that name. I receive your teaching. I believe your teaching. I am empowered. I am empowered. No power of darkness, no power of evil will turn my life upside down anymore. Redeemed from the curse of the law. From the curse of the territory. From the curse of the surrounding. From the curse of the tribe. Redeemed from the curse. Virtue flowing from Christ coming from Christ, coming through Christ, and coming unto you. Enablement. That's what God has created you for. He enables you to do, to achieve, and you'll make it triumph. Thanks be unto God that always gives us the triumph in Christ the indwelling, he dwells with me. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth, dwelleth in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me oppression. Your praise in your heart, your mind, your life and it takes away that he was seen that pins people down and he raises you up with his resurrection power and now you have the new nature in Christ accept it it's a gift now you possess the new nature in Christ believe it it's a gift that he gives and it is unto you according to your faith amen i receive i believe life will not be the same anymore 
place of that hand the glory of god will shine upon your life the grace of god will be sufficient in your life and the goodness of god will never stop in your life when you turn to the right when you turn to the left when you are moving in front and when you have to go somewhere god it is everlasting power and strength will follow you through in jesus name from school to college to university to your service to after your service to professional life goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and if jesus tarries and you live old 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 and then you are called to glory angels will be standing attention at attention to welcome you and then forever and ever you'll be with the lord in jesus name father we well, thank you for this hour thank you because you formed us even though the world deformed us you have come to transform us and we're asking you lord for everyone here young and older lord i'm asking that your transforming power and spirit and savior redeemer will work on every life in jesus name and we're praying oh lord all those dark things of the past all the weaknesses of the past all the failure of the past we leave them behind and we go forth in the strength of the lord in jesus name Amen. new life Amen. salvation Amen. forgiveness Amen. freedom Amen. an open heart Amen. peace with god and victory over our past life grant unto everyone in jesus name Amen. i pray lord power strength Amen. triumph Amen. transformation Amen. achievement Amen. excellence Amen. will follow everyone from now on Amen. lord take the word impossibility from every mouth Amen. and make their lives a life of possibility Amen. a life of growing a life of moving up a life of seeing every impossibility become possible in jesus name lord turn every brother brother victor every sister sister victoria men women boys girls achievement in every life it is done we shall see it we shall rejoice with you in jesus name we pray confirmation in every life in jesus name